Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji and today I want to share with you a little bit about some sewing things. In particular, I want to be talking about Butterix 6385, which is the coat that I recently made and that you're seeing on your screen right now. So if you like sewing content, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and continue watching. So this pattern is offered from Butterick and I sewed a size 12, a straight size 12 and I really do love the fit of this coat. It's not one that's very baggy. I'd say that it fits me pretty well. The only adjustment that I made was to the pocket pieces of this pattern because in this coat it has um, these front pockets that are a part of the princess seam of the front of this coat. So if you could see the front and the back are with this wool. The pockets originally were not big enough to fit my phone and I have an iPhone 10X Max and it has a case on it and I'm on my phone a fair bit and so I like to have my phones in my coat's pocket not like in my purse or something or another pocket I want it to be the most accessible so I knew that was important to me it may not be important to you but I went ahead and lengthened the pocket pieces on these and I thought that that was such a huge game changer for me with this coat because I can carry all kinds of stuff I well what I carry in my coat is usually a pair of mittens in one pocket and my phone is in the other pocket um, because I usually am wearing fingerless mitts and then I have a pair of just regular mittens over top of those because my hands and my feet are just always very very cold so it was worth it to me to be able to add that pocket because it was something that I knew I was going to want to use a lot Another detail that I added to this coat was to put a button right on the collar and this is sewn through both layers of the collar and I just added this <laughs> because I had an extra button and I was just like oh, what am I going to do with one button in the future and so I was just like maybe I'll just put it on the collar as a little detail and I thought that was just I don't know why but I was just like that would be so cute so I put it on and I really do love it now. I love how it does kind of feel like a brooch or something like that. Just a little extra decoration that I always have. It's just such a sweet touch to me. And it is designed to be a coat so it does call for coating weight fabrics and things like that. The fabric that I used in particular is from Minerva. It was gifted to me so I do have that link down below for you. However the lining is a fabric that I got from Joann's that they no longer carry so I won't be able to link that down below for you but you can do this fun plaid with just about any color of plaid that you like. I love coats that have contrast linings like this and so that is one of the I think things that really a lot of people love about this coat and what I also love about this coat and if you can remember in my plans video that I um, filmed in November and put up on this channel I was talking about um, making this coat or I think it was my December plans um, video and I'll put that up there for you but yeah it is definitely a crazy crazy thing that I finally did make this coat and if you're wondering no I did not make the other coat that I also had in my plans but I do still have plans on making that so this butter coat is such a love for me it is such a huge project that I got done and I am so proud of this coat. Not only is it extremely useful, but it was actually pretty easy to put together. Um, there are a lot of steps in this coat, so I'm just going to start right there. There are a ton of steps in this coat, so please do not start this project thinking that it will be something that you will only spend a few hours on because it's... It's just got a lot of top stitching. It obviously has the princess seams and a yoke, which makes just a lot of seaming um, that you're doing in this garment. And honestly, I feel like the instructions for this pattern were very helpful um, and I didn't have a lot of issues working through it. 
Okay, so I just hung it up so I didn't feel the need to rustle it around for the rest of this video. So I hope that that is better for you all <laughs> watching this video. I had such a fun time just thinking about what things I might want to change with this coat, but I didn't end up changing a lot of details because I honestly love how classic this style is. And I also really love how it suits so many different styles of outfits and lines that I like to wear. So I love the top stitching on there. I love the fact that there's a yoke and that there's a two-piece sleeve because it really does give me a lot of movement in the arms. And I don't feel very restricted when I'm wearing this coat. Even if I do have on a sweater and a shirt and, you know, scarves and all kinds of stuff. I do feel like I still have a good range of motion in the coat while I'm wearing it. Today I'm wearing my humongous plaid skirt. I'll put a picture up instead of <laughs> lifting my skirt up. I'm wearing this big skirt today and I am wearing this coat out and about um, as I'm running errands today and going to pick my daughter up and things like that. And I honestly was not feeling like my skirt was being crushed to death or that it stopped at a weird place. And I feel like it looks really great with very casual outfits, but also looks really good with outfits that are maybe a little bit more, I would say like business wear, like things that you would maybe wear to work. It still fits that same style very well. So I love how versatile this coat has already been for me. So I spent a couple of weeks on this coat because it is something that I knew I wanted to get right. I really think that that helped me in making this coat look the way that it does because I really spent time to look at all of the details of this coat and make sure that I did them as best as I could because I wanted this coat to last and for me to be able to wear it for years to come. Um, one of you actually commented and let me know that another YouTuber is making this uh, or did a, a series on making this coat. So I'll have that link down below if you are actually interested in more help or resources in making this coat. If you are interested in making it yourself, this video will not actually show you any of that kind of information. I believe that this is definitely a project that an advanced beginner would be able to um, work through if they gave themselves time. It is something that you will want to give yourself time for for sure and I cannot stress that enough because it is a rather detail forward coat. The pocket flap details are just something that really stands out to me about this coat because I love that there's a couple different shapes you can choose and with the top stitching, I think it just adds just an extra layer of elevation to this style and just looks a lot more high end. I was really concerned about the seams on this garment. I wanted it to look very professional looking. Like I didn't want my coat to look homemade. I wanted it to look handmade as someone put to me um, on Instagram recently. I love the fact that this does look like something that maybe you could buy in a store and I really think it comes down to, I mean the details yes, but also how flat I was able to get these seams. And so my secret is actually a detergent bottle. I used my Tide bottle on top of this fabric whenever I would press a seam. Instead of using like a traditional wood clapper, I used a detergent bottle because it is super heavy super heavy and having that weight on the seam really allowed me to get them pretty flat without having to dry clean this garment before I put on buttons or anything I do intend to dry clean this garment once it needs it but I think that that was really something that made making this coat so so easy because as gravity does the work of pulling the detergent bottle down on my wool coat, I can be working on other projects and things like that while I wait for the fabric to cool down and then move on. It is extra, extra, extra warm and I love the fact that there is a minimal interfacing with this coat pattern. And also because of the heavyweight coating that I'm using, I definitely didn't need nearly as much interfacing as I normally would need. So that's a that's something that I think I really enjoyed about this coat as well. Um, when I sewed up this coat, I used a sharp stretch needle 
and I used a sharp stretch needle just because so I used a 90 I think that's a 14 um, in UK sizes for needles but a 90 stretch needle because um, I've made a couple of coats before and I know that it is easier for me to sew through these really thick fabrics and these really thick coats with a stretch needle because that eye is just a little bit bigger on there. I did also use a top stitch needle when I was going around and top stitching the outside of some of the more bulky layers of this coat like when I would top stitch over the pocket flaps I used that and I also used um, the top stitch needle whenever I was kind of securing where the lining and the shoulder seam come together because I didn't hand sew those together to to tack them so I did make a couple changes in the construction so I'll talk about that now just because I feel like it may be useful to you if you are looking for ways to eliminate as much hand sewing as you can so I don't recommend eliminating the hand sewing um, if it's something that you can stand to spend the time on just because it does make this coat look a lot more couture a lot more high-end to not have as much of the stitching lines on there like around the sleeve and things like that so what I did um, for my sleeves because you finish the sleeve outside first and so um, I use my blind hem function on my sewing machine to do the sleeves and it was honestly a nightmare mostly because this fabric is very thick it's coating fabric it's meant to be very thick and um where i messed up was the fact that i thought that maybe i don't know it would be easier to do the blind hem instead of doing a hand stitch and in some cases it may be but for me i just found that the fiddling of it took so much more time than just doing some simple hand stitching and i want to caution you on getting caught up with the hand stitching. I want to say that just as kind of a reminder that when you are making garments and things for yourself the only standard that you need to keep is that you're committed to enjoying this project and so for me I know that I'm held back from a lot of projects because I absolutely despise hand stitching. So if you're someone who knows that this project will sit forever because of the hand stitching don't feel shamed or guilted because you are using your sewing machine instead of hand finishing the garment. It is 100 times better to have a garment that you can wear as opposed to a garment that has been sitting around that you will never wear or will take you months to actually get around to doing. If you don't enjoy hand stitching then I encourage you to just stitch this, the hems with your sewing machine and do as minimal hand stitching as you possibly can. I went ahead and did the hand stitching just because I wanted to challenge myself in an area that I know I'm not very comfortable in. I am not a great hand stitching um, person, person who can hand stitch. I'm not very good at hand stitching things because I don't ever do it. And I realized that there's a lot of garments that I have that I, you know, didn't finish with a hand stitch that I look back at now and I, I wish that maybe I had. And so when I made this coat, I was just like, give it a go, Zaji, and see how it goes. So you'll see this is kind of the stitch. This is the stitch that I used for the hem of my coat. I simply took my coat to my cutting mat and laid it out really flat. And for the outside layer, so for the wool part of the coat, I, I trimmed that up so that everything was even at the bottom. And then I marked with a friction pin about an inch and a quarter up from that uh, bottom hem that I evened off, or raw edge that I evened off. And used Wonder Clips to hold it at the bottom because I don't like to hand stitch. And you don't need to base those for them to be perfect. My Wonder Clips hold things in place extremely well and if you have wonder clips I encourage you to use them for real in this purpose instead of doing the basting I mean, you can do the basting it's up to you but I use the wonder clips and that was awesome to hold into place for me while I was doing this catch stitch that I did on top this hand stitch was going to be completely enclosed so I wasn't concerned with it being you know overly beautiful but I was more concerned on it being secure 
So if you are unfamiliar with how to do a catch stitch or a slip stitch, I will leave some videos down below that really helped me when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do or how I wanted to do the hand stitching for the bottom of my coat. So what I did for the liner or the lining of this coat was similar to how I found the hem for my outside wool layer but what I did instead was lay out the lining just lay it out flat on my table with the lining side up and I folded under just so that there was a little bit of a gap at the bottom between the lining and the wool part and I sewed it down that way and that's probably I mean I'm sure there's more technical ways of describing that. I did follow basically the patterns instruction as far as that goes. However, um, I had a lot of bagging out, I guess, that I really should have done more of with the lining of my coat because I feel like my rayon has just shifted a little bit inside the coat. It's nothing that's unbearable or horribly noticeable. But I do really love the finish of my coat right now. Even though it is a little bit baggy, this coat was a beast. I think it was over 58 steps or just about 58 steps to complete this. So it was an absolutely insane project. I've made many coats for my daughter at this point. <laughs> many and many <laughs> coats for my daughter at this point. But this was the first coat that I really like proper coat that I made for myself with a lining. And honestly, I could do for more. I could definitely make more. And I do now really want to make the red plaid coat that I talked about in my December plans video. I'll just have that project kind of going on in the background. So that's going to be it for me today. If you like this video, I really do encourage you to subscribe and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're making this coat or if you have had thoughts about um, making this coat. What are your plans in that regard, I suppose? And I'd love to chat more about it. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.